Cool, thank you, Yasmin. Thanks for joining, guys. We are just gonna wait a couple of minutes um, for everybody to join. Thanks for coming along. We're gonna be doing a little bit of um, sketching today. So if you guys wanna grab paper, pens, pencils, anything you've got before we get started, that would be perfect. So um, if you've got paint as well, even better, but definitely not needed. So we're just gonna wait until uh, the turn of the hour and then we're gonna start all together. So it's a really good time if you wanna get set, grab a bit of paper, um, pencils, any paint that you might have knocking about, kids' crayons, uh, oil pastels, charcoal, anything you can make a mark with we want to use. And if you've got a buddy staying with you who wants to get involved, even better. It's really great um, to have somebody there taking part with you and there'll be a few ways that you can uh, get creative together. So if you want to go and yell at your housemate and be like, come on, it's starting. Uh, go do that now too before we start. Uh, I'm going to do my very best when we do get going um, uh, to answer any of your questions as we go. I can see loads of you waving and commenting. That's awesome. Um, so um, as we go, if there's anything that you want to know, uh, I'm going to keep my eye out for your comments. Make sure um, I am answering them. So um, welcome anybody who's just joined. We're just going to wait until uh, five o'clock and then we're going to start. And in the meantime, we're just getting set. So um, we're getting paper, uh, pens, pencils, um, paint brushes, a little bit of paint, anything that you might have. Uh, and then we're gonna get creative together. Um, just turning my screen so you can see, hopefully, um, my little easel. And we're just going to wait until five. So just one more minute. Um, I've got a little bit of music playing in the background. If that uh, interferes at all, please just shout. Um, and um, last chance, if you want to go grab uh, anything, paper, pencils, biz kit mail is ready and looking forward to it. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I hope we have some fun. Um, uh, so I've got with me, I've got my very messy palette, I've got some uh, little cup of water, I've got some kitchen roll in case things get a little messy, um, but mostly I'm going to be working with paper and pencil today. Cool, so it's five o'clock. Um, welcome everybody. Um, my name's Zina Alfara, I am the founder of Masterpiece Creative Studios. Uh, which is a mindful painting experience in, um, in Belgravia, in London. So at Masterpiece, we believe that painting and creativity is almost like a form of meditation. Um, it is a way to uh, unwind, to relax, and to find that feeling of flow that lots of us get from things like yoga or, or maybe even pure meditation. Um, and at Masterpiece, we believe that lots of people maybe never experience that feeling of creative flow um, with painting and drawing because they feel a lot of pent up anxiety about not being very good, especially at the beginning. Um, and they come with quite a, a high sense of judgment around their work. So a lot of what we do at Masterpiece is about trying to um, unpin some of that so that we um, can really see painting about uh, being about more about the process and less about the output. So um, what we're going to do today, we're going to be doing um, a few creative warm up exercises that anybody can do from home with their kids, wherever, um, just using paper and pencil. And um, and then if we have a bit of time towards the end, um, I'm gonna take that a little step further and I'm gonna show you the same sorts of ideas, um, but with painting. 
So if you've got paint, um, you can follow along with me, but if you haven't, please don't worry. All of our um, painting tutorials are um, pre-recorded and we can send those out to you. Just DM us at Masterpiece London and we can get that sorted. Um, and we can also send uh, painting materials out to you all over the world. So don't worry if you love this stuff, but you just don't have the materials with you. Stay tuned, enjoy it, and um, we can get some stuff sent out to you if you need. Um, so um, we're gonna get started with our first uh, drawing exercise. Um, so all you're gonna need is um, a pencil uh, and a, or a pen and a sheet of paper and any object you can see, um, any object at all. So it could be um, like an apple you've got knocking around or like a glass or a vase or a flower, it can be anything. And I want you to take a sheet of paper, it can be a scrap, and I want you to, um, to, to have a go at sketching out that object. But um, I want you to do this um, using your non-dominant hand. So if you're right-handed, I want you to hold your pencil in your left hand. Or if you're left-handed, I want you to hold your pencil in your right hand. And um, I'm just gonna pick a random object for this. Um, I'm gonna be doing my cup. Um, you guys do whatever you like. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna use my left hand. And we're just gonna have about 30 seconds. So a non-dominant hand, any object you can see. And we are sketching three, two, one. Hoping that you can see this-ish. And I'm gonna draw out this, this cup. And I'm only spending 30 seconds, hey? So it's never gonna be Picasso. It's just about getting the big, obvious, clear shapes down. And I'm using my non-dominant hand. So this is a hand that you probably will not have used for anything, let alone drawing. So give yourself a little break. Does not matter what this looks like. Um, we know for sure it's gonna look pretty crazy, but that's okay. A lot of the time with the, the adults that come through to the studio, they maybe haven't picked up a pencil in 20 years for some of them. And actually those first marks are really intimidating, really scary and are so scary that it's prevented people from even even starting. So what we try and do is just break the ice with that sheet of paper, um, lowering the expectations by setting some constraints. This time the constraint is using our non-dominant hand uh, and just allowing our guests to um, get used to making marks again. So here's my really beautiful uh, cup drawing that I've just done with my non-dominant hand there in about 90 seconds. Hopefully you guys um, have got something similar and I would love after the session if um, you could take pictures of your little sketches and DM them to me, I would really love to see them. So that was our first warm up exercise. We were using our non-dominant hand um, to draw an object we could see. So uh, I'm gonna take us forward to our next game. Um, now again, I want you to use uh, something you can see. So I um, brought some images with me. Uh, this time around, I'm gonna work with this image. Uh, it's the Yorkshire giraffe um, by one of our artists called uh, Harriet Ginnett. Um, and so I'm going to use this, but if you guys want to use, again, another physical object you can see, or um, maybe you've got a magazine knocking around, you're going to just pick a random image. And what I want you to do this time is I want you to take that paper image, whatever you've got, um, or an object, and I want you to turn it upside down. Um, and I want you to forget about what this thing is supposed to be. So this isn't a giraffe anymore. It's just a series of shapes, just an abstract object, lines, colors, that's it. 
Um, and for this next game, we're going to work on drawing whatever we're looking at, but upside down. And so the benefit of doing it this way is um, when you think of this thing as a giraffe, you bring a lot of assumption around uh, what a giraffe is supposed to be, what it's supposed to look like. And that assumption can sometimes get in the way of really seeing an object. So when we turn it upside down, all of those assumptions go away and we can really just see it as um, a set of shapes, interesting shapes and lines. So I'm turning mine upside down and you could be working with any image that you've got or if you've got an object, you can just simply flip that upside down. You can just see mine just here, uh, my upside down image. And what I'm going to do, I'm using my dominant hand this time, uh, so I'm right handed and I'm going to have a go sketching this image out um, with my with my dominant hand, but upside down. So um, if you want to have a go at this at the same time, please do. So the most obvious lines with this giraffe are starting with the neck. Straight line, straight line. We got a blob. We got something that from this angle kind of looks like a heart shape. So I'm going to draw that. Um, we've got a big, uh, kind of almost rectangular shaped head that I'm just going to quickly block out. And we've got um, like the continent of Africa sort of a shape going on for the muzzle upside down and two nostrils we've got two kind of square diamond almost shapes that I guess represent the eyes and then for the ears we've got these two big kites kite and kite we've got two horns which are just these big rectangles and we've got an L shape for this um, marking on the forehead so hopefully you guys are in a similar kind of space to where I am now you've got this upside down object that you're drawing you're working with your dominant hand and you're just creating the big shapes and we're not thinking about this thing as a giraffe anymore. We're just thinking about it as lines and block shapes. So you can see my giraffe coming together here. Um, this is a really awesome trick. If um, you ever find yourself just stuck with a piece where you have been staring at it and staring at it and staring at it and you just cannot seem to crack it. Um, flipping it upside down will give you a whole new perspective. If you're halfway through, it's still a really great thing to try. Um, it will just get you out of that rut um, and it will guaranteed make you see the object differently and make you see what's really there, not what you think is there necessarily. So have a go at that. Um, all of these games, by the way, are um, really fun to do with kids. Um, so imagine like you're, you're waiting for dinner to come and you want to keep them occupied. You just got like a scrap bit of paper in your purse and a pen. Um, try and remember some of these and uh, throw them at the kids and they absolutely love them. So, um, so we've done two so far. We've done a non-dominant hand sketch of an object. We've done an upside down drawing of, um, of this image, Yorkshire Giraffe by Harriet Gillett. Um, I'm going to move us on now to um, a third game. By the way guys, if you have any questions, um, anything you can't see, you want me to zoom in, please um, just comment. Um, so for this next game, I again want you to take maybe an object you can see. If you've got a buddy with you right now, um, this is a great time to get to know their beautiful faces a little better. So. Uh, get the cat to sit still, get the boyfriend, the girlfriend, anyone you've got around you to get involved for this one. Um, I'm failing that, anything you've got, uh, or a magazine picture is perfect. Um, for me, I'm going to work with this image. 
the interruption there. I think I lost signal, but I reckon I'm back. Um, I am going to use this image. This is Standing Woman by Eloise O'Keefe, uh, one of our masterpiece instructors. Um, I am going to use this image for this exercise, but again, use whatever you have. And this time I want you to um, really simplify what you're looking at. Oh, you can't hear. Uh, can anybody hear? I, I can see that Amy can't hear right now, but uh, are others of you able to hear okay? Um, oh, cool. Thank you, Annabelle. Awesome. Thank you so much. Cool. So uh, we're working with an image we can see. And I want you to simplify this thing right down to just um, lines. Really clean, smooth, simple lines. So um, to do this, I want you to, with a pen, pencil, anything, look at that image and without taking your pencil off the paper, draw the whole thing. And again, we're just gonna take like about a minute, 30 seconds. So it's gonna be one continuous line. So if you've got your pencil on the paper, do not lift it to um, create two separate spaces. Just join the shapes together with one continuous line. So I, um, I'm looking at mine right now and you can work with whatever you've got. And I'm just gonna start anywhere and really resist the impulse to lift my hand. And remember, this is not about perfection. This is not about having a piece that I'm going to hang up on a wall or do anything with. It's just not about that. This is something that I could just as well put in the bin after. Rip it up and put it in the bin. And sometimes, you know, it's actually quite good to actually let yourself do that. To have a go doing something totally out of your comfort zone. And no matter what you think of it, if you like it or you don't like it, just put it in the bin and do that three or four times to just let yourself be off the hook um, with your drawings and your paintings so that you know there's no pressure for it to be anything other than a painting experience or a drawing experience and an opportunity to, to let go in your day, especially if you've got big responsibilities like parenting or a big job where there's constant pressure to deliver um, and for your time to be productive and not really a whole heap of time to um, just be for the sake of it, no other reason, not for anybody. So um, take that into this sketch. This is something that we're doing because it's a little bit different. It might tell us something new about what we like and what we don't like about the marks that we make. Uh, and that's it. So Eloise's um, piece, Standing Woman, is, a, is an awesome candidate for this kind of line drawing because it's just so elegant and so simple. Um, and hopefully you can see this. This is my single line drawing of uh, Eloise O'Keefe's um, piece, Standing Woman. And I did that by um, looking at the image and just drawing out the shape with a single line. So not lifting my pencil off the paper this time round to see if I could achieve the shape uh, all in one continuous line. And again, I'd love to see your version of that. Um, when you uh, when you finish on the call today, if you want to take a quick picture and send it to me, I'd love to see it. Um, uh, cool. So that is the third and final warm up game we're going to play. And at this point, I'm going to take you forward into um, a little uh, painting exercise to show you. And um, whether you've got paints in front of you or you haven't, um, still feel free to watch along. You can take these ideas forward into your own paintings um, when you next get a chance. And if you need um, any of our art kits or anything like that to help you get started, we'd be delighted to send one your way. So um, I want to show you this piece. 
I think the connection's gone, here we go. Uh, this is um, my attempt at uh, Victoria Obolensky's piece, Hope. Um, so Victoria is again one of our artist instructors over at Masterpiece. Um, so I just wanted to bring some of the techniques that Victoria uses in this piece to life for you guys. Um, it's a suit, I know it looks quite involved, but it's actually really simple, really fun once you get the knack for it. Um, so um, Victoria's piece is available as a painting kit. So if you wanted to paint this piece and uh, you don't really have art materials at home, um, you can order one of these. Um, they are £27, including um, free postage, um, next day shipping. And what you get is um, a few things. I'm going to work with those things today. Um, you get a canvas board with a strip of masking tape um, and a few lines to just help guide you through the piece. Um, so that's super helpful. That's hand sketched by a, a, an artist. Um, you get um, the motif printed out and um, the instructions on the back step by step. Um, a set of paints. Um, now these are the hand picked paints by the artist. So exactly the right shades for this particular piece. Um, two brushes, again, pick for the piece, uh, and if you're working on this at home right now, you want one slightly bigger one and one slightly skinnier one. Um, nice little palette and a sponge. Um, so if you've got any of those things at home, great. If not, um, just watch along um, and we'll get started. So what I wanted to really bring to life with this piece was um, two things really. Um, the first thing is uh, how do you create like such a clean straight horizon line because that horizon um, line is like basically the focal point of uh, of a piece like this and the the absolute sharpness of it really makes the um, the piece come alive and feel true to nature. So how do you create that super smooth, super straight horizon line? And then the, the second thing I wanted to show you with this was um, some tips and tricks for how to create a sky. Um, and in the spirit of wanting to use painting as a, as a form of meditation, as a way to relax and unwind, um, I think this particular method for creating the sky is really soothing. So if you were just, you know, late one night, you couldn't sleep and you just wanted a way to um, to get out of your head and uh, and unwind a little bit um, before trying to get back to sleep again, I think this is a really fun um, way of doing it. You can completely zone out and it's going to look beautiful. So um, with, in the interest of time, what I've prepared is uh, an extra little canvas board um, where I've just taken the top part of the sea up to the horizon line um, to simplify this piece right down so that we can just focus on the sky right now. So imagine I had spent all that time building in the sea, this beautiful wave, the sand, um, and don't worry, all the steps to do this are in Victoria's Guide. Um, now I'm turning my attention to the sky. So first things first, coming back to that beautiful crisp horizon line, um, I'm going to use uh, the strip of masking tape that would come in the kit. And what you want to do with this is you want to place it um, over the sea and you want to see a little tiny line of your um, sea popping up at the top. So you don't want it to be so high that the tape is actually covering um, any of the whiteboard because um, you'll see, but when I pull the, the tape off, if there was um, some white under there, you'd have like a weird separation between the, the sky and the sea. So you really want um, the tape to come down just underneath um, the top of your sea there. And what's great about this is if you have been really kind of messy, playful with how you've done um, your sea, um, you can just place the tape there and if you've got uh, a messy line over the top, absolutely fine because that's re what we're gonna fix now as we paint in the sky. So um, in Victoria's painting kit, um, you get these six 
uh, colours and for the sky I'm going to work um, with a combination initially of these three, so a white, a cobalt blue and a cyan blue. And I'm going to introduce a little bit of the black to um, create a little bit more depth in the um, in the clouds. Um, but you could also use some of the um, the yellow tones to create some kind of sense of sun um, and make the whole piece a little warmer if you wanted to. Um, and so I'm going to show you quite how messy you can get with this. Um, so this is the sponge that comes in the kit. Uh, I'm dipping it into some water. And I am um, taking a little bit of my cyan blue uh, and a little bit of my cobalt blue and some white and I'm mixing it all together super rough and um, I'll put this across and show you this cool so um with my sponge what I'm doing is I'm just slapping this on um, the sponge itself is still a little wet, so your first coat is going to be really loose, but that's okay. And um, the thing that I'm sure you, you, you've noticed um, when you are gazing out at the horizon is um, this interesting light phenomena where um, the sky appears quite a lot lighter at the horizon and quite a lot darker. Um, the further up your eye travels. So what we do to achieve that is we simply introduce a little bit more of the darker tone, the cobalt blue, uh, the cobalt blue there, um, over the top. And we are just gonna build some of that darker tone top um, so that we go from dark to light as we travel down the board. And I mean, for a sponge, if you're at home right now watching this, want, wanting to get involved, um, you can literally use a kitchen sponge. If it's clean, um, you can just cut a little um, cube off and use that absolutely fine. Um, you could also use a, a makeup sponge, like if you use a sponge to um, you, do your foundation and things, but um, uh, they're expensive. So kitchen sponges are a much better option. Um, so I'm just going to keep building up these layers, uh, working with lighter tones at the bottom and darker tones at the top. And I am really wanting to cover uh, the top of the tape, so the part where the, um, the top of the C was still poking through. And I want that coverage to be pretty um, opaque so that that a uh, dark line of the sea gets um, absolutely covered. And you, you, you will achieve that no problem with acrylic paint. All you need to do is keep adding those layers. Uh, acrylic dries really fast and uh, once it's dry, it's, um, it's brilliant for, for layering up. Um, sometimes you'll find when the paint's really wet, um, you're just moving the paint around. So rather than building up layers, so it's it's really good to kind of go put the kettle on, do something else. Sometimes, if you feel like that's happening, to let the piece dry off, and then come back and get involved. So that's my base for the sky. And in reality, what I do is I would keep um, working on those layers. Um, and really spending lots of time just gently and gradually making those transitions really nice. But I'm just uh, gonna fly through this so you get a sense. Um, so now what we wanna do, and you can see some of this in, um, in Victoria's original piece, um, she has quite a lot of uh, cloud coming through in the horizon and, uh, and very fine wispy clouds up top. So um, what we probably normally do is let this um, really set, the blue really set, and then work the clouds over. Uh, but I'm just gonna dive straight in. And like I say, this kit, um, alongside um, Eloise's kit, um, and um, 
Harriet's kit. All of these pieces are available on our website. So if you like the look of them and you wanna have a go painting them at home, um, we'll send you everything you need in the post. Um, so I'm gonna start working on the clouds. So um, you can either work with a, a sponge or with a brush. In fact, I'm gonna use a brush um, just to show you the difference. And um, you do not at all need to picture yourself achieving these clouds exactly the way that um, that Victoria did. Um, make your sky uh, your own. Um, that what's so beautiful about um, images of nature is the sense of randomness, the sense of chance, um, the idea that, you know, the one sunset that you're looking at, no one will ever look at it in the same way again. So um, take that um, perspective into your painting and really make the sky as organic as you like. Uh, but what I found really interesting about um, Victoria's tutorial when she talks about um, clouds is um, she mentions the, um, the, the, kind of the idea that clouds are actually quite a lot more white at the top of the cloud and quite a lot more grey under the cloud. And when she says it, it kind of, it seems obvious because of course the sun is hitting the cloud up top and there's almost a shadow cast uh, under the belly of the cloud. But it was only when she said it that it really, um, it really dawned on me. Um, so what we're doing is we're just creating these real sweeping motions with a brush, with some white, um, just using white for now. And as you can see, like, because the paint underneath is still ever so slightly wet, um, the white glides through and creates all of these um, blended shades completely uh, on, on its own accord. And that's what makes this process so beautiful if, like I say, you're up one night, you can't sleep. You could just keep working this all night long if you wanted to, um, and it will be as if the sky is kind of coming to life in front of you. Um, it's super fun, it's super relaxing. And um, any yogis watching, if you're big on your uh, ujjayi breath, uh, which as you guys will know, is the sort of breath that almost sounds like crashing waves. Um, this is the piece for that. <laughs> if you, um, again, if you're just trying to unwind, a little bit of anxiety from the day. Um, building in some of that breath work as you paint, just setting the scene of the piece and letting yourself switch off, letting that judging brain um, take a break and just um, playing with the really organic colors and tones that you can um, see coming to you. So hopefully you guys can see some of that coming together. Um, like you can see with mine, you can really just um, uh, keep playing, keep lightening those tops, keep darkening those bottoms, and just um, work really free. Um, and so now, um, what we're going to be looking to do next is to actually pull back this, um, this sheet of masking tape. And hopefully what we'll reveal is a really clean and clear um, horizon line. Um, this is my favourite bit of a painting like this. It's like the, the big reveal. Oh, hey, um, Sharon, um, we're using acrylic today. Uh, which is water-based paint. Um, all of our art kits use acrylic because they are um, non-toxic, uh, odorless, water-soluble paint. Um, so they're really beginner-friendly. You don't need any alcohol or solvents or anything like that to clean your brushes. Um, and if you get a little bit on, on your clothes or anything like that, it washes clean off. Um, but uh, you could just as well achieve a piece like this um, with oil paint for sure. Um, 
uh, and watercolour equally, um, you could have a go at a motif like this um, using watercolours if you've got them at home. One of our kits uses a watercolour pencil by Karen Dash, um, which are so much fun. Uh, you apply them as if you're just drawing with pencil and then you um, you use a paintbrush, just a wet paintbrush, to, um, to transform the um, pigment into almost like a watercolour um, texture. Um, so yeah, that's, that one's great. That's Eva Lies Lemon Wreath. Um, so coming back to this piece, um, we are about to pull back the, um, the masking tape uh, to hopefully see that horizon line come through. Um, what you want to do is you want to ideally let the paint dry um, before you do this because sometimes in the process of peeling the tape back um, you can just pull up a little bit of the paint that you might not mean to. Um, but I think we should just go for it. So uh, I am going to bring you right in. And just to kind of locate you with where we are in this, the original piece, what we've done is we've cut the bottom of the piece off just above the wave. We focus just on the top part of the sea and the sky right now. Um, but um, the detail of the wave is super fun to create. Um, you can get some real texture through this frothy part. As I rub my finger across it, I can still feel um, the, the bubble, bo bubbly texture of the paint that's left there. Um, and then that warm, dry sand transitioning into this wet area of sand is really fun um, to, to create. But for, for now, what we've done is we've cut all of that off and we're just looking at that top bit of sea and the sky. So with the tape on, this is what it's looking like. Really rough um, sky there coming right down, overlapping with the tape, no bother. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm just turning this round, seeing the back of the tape just there. And I'm going to start peeling this back. Okay, so how can I hold this so you can see? Okay, ready. As you can see, as I was pulling that tape back, some of the wet paint starts to slip down. Um, but if the paint was completely dry, you wouldn't have that, um, that issue at all. So what you've got there is a 10 minute seascape, um, which just couldn't be easier. Um, if you're an absolute beginner, if you haven't touched paint in 10 years, um, you'll find that um, really easy, really accessible. Um, and the final result is, is really beautiful. You can imagine it in like a crisp white frame on your wall in the loo or your kitchen or whatever. And um, nice little signature bottom right hand corner. And when people come in and ask you about it, you can say it's an original. Um, and, um, and like I say, that process of creating the sky uh, is so... Um, soothing in that you're just sweeping the paint without much thought um, and creating all these beautiful rich colours um, without even really meaning to um, is really fun uh, and really relaxing. And the last thing I wanted to show you, um, let me grab uh, another canvas board. Um, it's just how 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 moody you can take um, the sky. So the sky that we did there was um, was a really kind of fresh, beautiful, bright day. But if you wanted to, um, I'm just very quickly covering a canvas board down here. If you wanted to make it more of a night scene, um, you could blending exactly the same colors um, but just much, much, much darker, still with kind of a little sense of light at the horizon line. It's 
still creeping through that sun, just creeping through from the, the day. Maybe this is just sunset. Um, and if you if you had built in the sea down here, you would have wanted to um, to have um, made that sea tone quite deep. But you can see I'm doing this super super quickly, just to give you a sense of how you can completely change the mood of the piece just by darkening all your colours back down. Um, and then the 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 final little trick I'll show you with this, if I can, without creating too much of a mess, is just a bit of paint flicking to give you a sense of almost like um, stars, twinkly stars. So what I'm gonna do um, wet brush, and I mean like pretty wet, kind of drippy and just some white paint. Now this is gonna be pretty hideous because I am just whacking this together just to kind of bring the technique to life, but um, ordinarily I'd, I'd probably spend 90 minutes on a piece of this size at least, um, 90 joyful, restful minutes. But I just wanna show you this technique of paint flicking. So I've got a really wet brush with just some white paint there and I'm going to knock this brush on the um, bony part of my wrist and what it's going to do is it's going to flick some paint onto the canvas um, and what you would maybe want to do is tape up the whole base, tape up the whole bottom part of the seat so you don't accidentally get any um, stars appearing there uh, but I'm just going to skip that just to show you this idea of paint flicking. So um, wet brush, got my wrist, and I am just letting the paint do its thing. I love this technique, it's so much fun. Um, the Yorkshire Giraffe by uh, Harriet uh, Gillett uses it, um, City of London uses it, uh, and it's just such a playful, simple way of getting quite a cool um, finish. So I'm just showing you up close. You can imagine how this could be the start to um, to a, 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 a nighttime seascape where the, um, the subject also includes uh, some stars. Um, you could build in a, um, a, a moon kind of creeping up above the horizon maybe some of the beautiful reflection lines that you get through the water of doing that. Um, but just to, um, just to show you that technique of paint flicking, um, which is in Anna Louise's um, City of London piece, um, which is in Harriet Gillett's um, Yorkshire Giraffe piece as well, and is super simple, super fun, really messy. And another one that the, um, that kids love. So if you've got, um, any children from like four and up um, and just cover the floor with um, with sheets of paper and teach them that technique of flicking the brush against their wrist um, you can uh, really have some fun with that the more wet your brush is the more paint you've got on there the bigger the um, splats you're gonna make so um, even better if you've got kids knocking around so um, thank you guys so much for joining. Um, uh, we have played some drawing games. Um, we have had a look at Victoria Obolensky's um, art kit, which is called Hope, um, and just drilled into some of the techniques there using the sponge and the masking tape. And you've also had a chance to have a quick look at um, Standing Woman and uh, Yorkshire Giraffe. Um, and if you have any questions about Masterpiece, uh, our studios in Eccleston Yards in Belgravia, we're hoping to reopen in July. If you have any questions about what we do at Masterpiece or our art kits or our at-home service, anything like that, um, please just DM us, we're Masterpiece London, um, and I uh, look after the Instagram account so I can, um, I'll see that myself and, and reply. Thank you, body, mind and soul nourishment for the lovely comments and everybody for the, um, 
the waves and the emojis. It's been really fun. This was my first ever Instagram live. Uh, I was really nervous. I hope it was okay. <laughs> and um, thanks everyone. Have an awesome evening. Stay well and see you in the studio very soon, I hope.